Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and happy release day. Today, my fifth novel comes out. It's called The Marionettes. It's the first book in a new series. It comes out today, August 24th, 2021. So I just wanted to film a little sit down video, celebrate with you guys, talk a little bit about the book. I had you send in some questions I'm gonna answer today. I'll have timestamps down below in the description if you wanna jump around. And if you missed it, I answered a ton of questions about this book also on the cover reveal video. So I'll have that link down below. But yeah, this is my fifth book release that's kind of crazy to say but this is my first book release for this series obviously and also for this genre and also for like a lot of other things this book is a lot of firsts for me i decided to experiment with a lot of different things this go around so yeah if you're new here hi my name is katie wismer i'm an indie author and also a freelance editor i have four books out currently two of them are poetry collections and two of them look like this this one's a young adult coming of age story. This is a college new adult romance. And The Marionettes, our newest book. I've had months to figure out how to properly explain this book and I still don't quite know. I'm calling it a fantasy romance. At first I was calling it an urban fantasy. For a while I called it a paranormal romance. So I'm sure you guys have all heard the blurb by now. If you haven't, I'll have the Goodreads page linked down below. You should add it on Goodreads anyway. So let me just tell you my own words, what it's about, what you can expect, some tropes that it includes, all of the fun things. It's also kind of contemporary fantasy. So personally with my reading tastes I don't really like to read high fantasy. So when I went into this book I wasn't even considering that it was going to be a fantasy and then it ended up being very fantasy-esque but it's set kind of in an alternate version of our world this first book this actually is getting into some of the questions you guys sent me in is set in new york so it's definitely like an urban setting but not quite our world because everyone is very much aware of vampires and other creatures and the vampires kind of run the cities they're 100 percent at the top of the food chain which is being below that and then humans there are other species and such but I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. This first book follows our main character Valerie Darkmore. She's a blood witch and she's undergoing her initiation into the marionettes which is basically a group of witches that serves the vampires. I forgot to talk about some things so I'm filming this clip really fast to insert here at the beginning. The book is available now. I'll have all of the links to purchase down below in the description. It's available in Kindle Unlimited. You can get it on Amazon and the print book is available elsewhere if you would rather shop Elsewhere, you can get the paperback, but the ebook is exclusive to Amazon. Now we're gonna jump straight into the questions you guys sent me in. I'm pre filming this video pretty far in advance, so if I end up getting more questions, you might see a clip of me from another day answering some more. Here's a good starting point How did you come up with the idea for the book? If you followed me for a while, I complain about this question every time I get it because I never have a good answer for it. I never really know where my ideas come from, but for this one particular book, I can actually answer the question. So I've always wanted to write a paranormal series. I really, really really love paranormal books. That's what got me into reading was the whole like paranormal craze in YA and like late 2000s around like Twilight and all of that kind of stuff. So I really enjoy paranormal books and specifically I've always loved vampires. So I always knew I wanted to write a book like that. I'm inspired by other TV shows, books, stories and stuff less so like plot wise but more so the vibe and the feeling that they give me so there were a couple of things or shows or books that I loved that I really wanted to capture a similar vibe too. And so specifically this book originated as Alice in Wonderland meets True Blood but instead of having the Queen of Hearts who is cutting off everyone's head we have this vampire queen who rips out people's teeth and adds them to her crown. That was the original idea. That queen is alive and well. I'm very much in this book now but the book obviously expanded a lot out from there so that was a really interesting way that this book started. Usually I'll start with a premise or concept or if I'm starting with a character usually it's a main character so it's very odd to me that this book started with a different character who, than our main character if that makes sense. So from figuring out you know the queen I kind of like built a society around her. Her son the prince is a big character in the book but that's where the original idea from the book came from. Was it always a series in your mind or did you start it as a standalone? I 100% knew before I even sat down to start writing this was going to be a series. I actually outlined this one. I don't usually do that very much but I outlined this as a series. I did so much world building ahead of time. Like I really tried to plan this out so I definitely knew right away this was going to be a series. I didn't know how many books were going to be in the series when I first started but I knew I wanted this to be a series and I knew I wanted it to be a longer series so at least four books. Where does it take place? So the first book 
is set in New York. It kind of switches off between upstate New York and then New York City. Trigger warnings. I have a whole page on my website for trigger warnings. I'll have the link down below. There's definitely a lot of triggers in here. The way I approach trigger warnings is like if anything could potentially trigger someone, I want to include it in the list because people who are seeking out these triggers obviously want to know them. So a lot of these I don't even consider to be that big of a deal but I wanted to include them just in case. The only reason I say that is because I feel like it sets up the expectation that this book is going to be like crazy and it's not. I just like to cover my bases. So I know some people consider trigger warnings to be spoilers and they don't want to know so I'll put a picture of the cover up on the screen while I read them out and when the cover disappears I'm done so you can mute me if you don't want to know what the triggers are. Smoking and addiction, imagery similar to self-harm, death, grief, loss of a loved one, abuse, physical, emotional, parental, parental neglect and absence, violence and gore, some relating to animals, sexual coercion and intimidation, kidnapping, torture, and manipulation. If I were to highlight any of them to say they're specifically like more prevalent than the others. The smoking and addiction one, the imagery similar to self-harm is just our main character Valerie is a blood witch so she has to cut herself and bleed every time she does her magic so that happens a lot. And then obviously violence. There's a lot of blood and death on the page. Okay. That's it for the trigger warnings. Will all books follow the same point of view? Probably. <laughs> I have recently finished writing the second book. I'm still revising it, it's not like the final version, but I'm working on finishing up book two. So our main character, Valerie, is the only point of view character. This is a first person book as well. So Valerie will always be a point of view character, 100%. I've toyed with the idea in future books of adding in additional point of views. Nothing set on that, but Valerie will always be a point of view character. It's not like we're having a book from a completely different character and Valerie's not there, you know? But as of right now, yeah, they should all be Valerie's point of view. This question makes me laugh. And you're not, I don't mean to call out the person who asked this question because I've gotten it more than once. I understand where it's coming from because months ago on my channel I said the series title was going to be The Marionettes, but I thought book one was going to have a different title. But now that we have the cover and the title is clearly on the cover and I've created the Goodreads page and I've said it and I've been calling it The Marionettes, I don't understand why I'm still getting this question if The Marionettes has a different title or if Marionettes is the actual title. It's on the cover, that's the actual title. I just think it's funny that I keep getting this question. Favorite thing about the series? Scenes, memories of writing, things you invented. I mean, there's parts of it that were really hard, but really satisfying once I got it done. Like world building was the hardest part of the series for me. But now that I've gotten it to a place where I'm happy with it, like it's so satisfying that I managed to do it even though I struggled my way through it. So I do like that. I love all of the characters in this book. They've been so much fun to hang out with. And there are so many characters in this series, which has my brain going off in like a million different directions like I could do so many spin-off series for this series there are so many interesting characters in these books and um my beta reader and I were just talking about this the other day she's telling me how much like her favorite part she really loves scenes where the characters are just using magic basically to mess around like it's nothing serious like they're just doing stupid things and honestly those kind of like little descriptions are just honestly so much fun and just thinking up ways that like little ways that people would be using their magic to make their lives easier. I don't want to say anything specific and spoil anything, but I don't know, stuff like that's been really fun. When are you planning to write or release the next book? So I'm working on book two right now and I'm in the middle of revising it, so I would love to have it come out in December of this year or January of next year. So sometime in the winter for sure is what I'm planning on. I'm also currently outlining book three, but I will warn you I am definitely anticipating there being a bigger gap between books two and three than books one and two. Book three is gonna be like twice as long. So that's part of the reason. Have you always wanted to write a series? Yes. A while ago, I posted a video on this channel with like my all time publishing goals. I've always wanted to write a longer series of at least four books. And this one is definitely gonna be at least four books long. So that'll cross that off the bucket list. Which book in the series are you the most excited for people to read? Book three. Haven't even written it yet. Book three. <laughs> it's one of those things like, you know, when you read a really good book that you just love and you just, you finish it, but you can't stop thinking about it. You're like daydreaming about it and it just really sinks in and it really sticks with you and it really just made an impression on you. It's so lame because this is my own series and I'm writing it, but this series has done that for me. Like I'm constantly thinking about it. I'm constantly daydreaming about it. And book three, I've literally been like daydreaming about scenes that are gonna happen in that book before I even wrote book two. Like I knew exactly what book three was gonna look like. So I'm really, really looking forward to book three. It's gonna be very different from books one and two. I don't wanna spoil much. There's gonna be a lot of new characters in book three and I just feel like we're really gonna get to expand on the world in book three and you're gonna get to see a lot more and learn a lot more so it's gonna be a really hard book to write. I'm pretty intimidated by it but I 
if I can pull it off, I think it's gonna be really good. One of the best ways that helps you outline a series. I wish I had a better answer for you because I did. I outlined the heck out of this series. I made this like world building packet that was over 40 pages long of all of this information. Not that it went out the window, but it was like that was barely scratching the surface. Like you don't even know what you don't know until you start writing the book. So honestly the best way i've been able to outline the books is by finishing one book so i outlined book one to the best of my ability and i figured things out as i went as i started writing because it's like not the like grand scale world building things you don't know it's like when you're in a scene and suddenly something comes up and you're like wait how would that work here and it's all of these little details that you never could have seen coming ahead of time that just stop you and having beta readers was a really big part of this because they would ask me really good questions and i would be like hmm it's a good question. I don't know the answer, but once I finished book one and I really solidified the plot and the world in that book, it became a lot easier to outline book two. And then once I started writing book two, it became a lot easier to outline book three. So I'm imagining once I write book three, it'll be easier to outline book four. So I kind of think of it as like car headlights. Like I can only see so far in front of me. I know a couple of major beats in the story and I kind of know vaguely where I want to end up. And I know what I want my character arcs to be, but a lot of the little in-between things, honestly, I tried to figure them out ahead of time. But I think just with my writing process, I'm not that kind of writer. I need to figure things out as I go because things that you would never be able to brainstorm and outline ahead of time occur to you randomly while you're writing. Like I come up with my best ideas out of nowhere. I had come up with my best characters who just like appear on the page who I wasn't planning on out of nowhere. So outline to the best of your ability. <laughs> but I think there's a lot that you can't know until you start writing. How long is this one compared to other fantasies and the later books in the series? So this first book is about 71,000 words. So how does that compare to other fantasy books? I mean, I could point to every single fantasy book I own and they all have a different word count, so I don't really know. This is definitely more like urban or contemporary fantasy and not high fantasy. So high fantasy tends to be a lot longer. So compared to high fantasy, it's on the shorter side, but I think within its genre, I think, I mean, it's, a story needs to be as long as it needs to be. I think it's exactly as long as it needs to be. I'm definitely anticipating the first one being the shortest. For comparison, book one, the final version, was my fifth draft. And each draft progressively got longer. Right now with book two, I'm in draft three and I'm at 70,000 words, so I'm at the same length as book one. But I'm anticipating adding another at least 10 or 20,000 words with the next couple of drafts. So I'm kind of expecting each book to get longer, which is pretty standard with fantasy series. But yeah, book one will definitely be the shortest, mostly because of the time frame. Book one spans two weeks. That's the whole time frame for the book. Book two spans like three or four months. And then book three is going to be an even longer time frame. So that's part of it too. What do you think the average length of each chapter is? I have no idea. I'm of the firm belief that varying lengths of your chapters is very important for flow and pacing and everything. So all of my chapters are different lengths. Some of them are seven pages long. Some of them are 14 pages long. Like there's no average. What kinds of research did you do for the book? Mostly location things. So when I was trying to find settings for scenes or if I was trying to picture something a little bit better. Yeah, I did a lot of research on the different settings and places and stuff. I did a lot of research on other creatures and things like that, myths and folklore and stuff. You'll see at the beginning of the book there is a list of the estates and there's 10 different ones and so these 10 different estates are run by vampires in different cities. So our vampire queen with the teeth crown, she runs the estate in New York. And so one of my beta readers was asking like how I chose the different cities for the different estates so I actually did a lot of research on like which places in the world receive the least amount of daylight. The ideal locations for vampires, basically. I did a little research on that. Just stuff like that. Is there a particular character you feel more attached to? It's interesting because I really love all of the characters in this series. I think they're all very interesting, but they're also pretty much all nothing like me. But obviously I really love the main character, Valerie. I would have to to be able to follow her for several books to like want to spend that much time with her. And there were some side characters that kind of popped out of nowhere who I ended up liking a lot and then I went back and added them into the book more because I liked them so much. So there were a couple of characters who surprised me but yeah I do really like our main character. She has these two best friends and their little trio dynamic I think is really fun and wholesome and I really like writing them. What is different from the previous releases? So this book is a completely different genre from my other books. I would say it's the most mature of all of them and the most graphic but other than that I think if you've read my other books you'll see my writing style is still my writing style and I don't know 
You guys read it, you tell me. Hello, it's a different day. Like I said, I got a ton more questions in, so we're filming a second part to this to answer some more. Honestly, I might end up splitting this up into multiple videos because this is gonna be really long. But I liked the questions that you guys sent in, so let's try and answer a few more. There are quite a few that I feel like are similar enough to previous questions that so we're gonna skip over them. So without any context, which character do you hate or dislike greatly? This is actually a really interesting question because I was talking about this with my mom. If you've read my previous books, I feel like they all have several unlikable characters in them. And one of the first things my mom said to me, she was like, this book, usually you have unlikable characters. There wasn't any characters in this one that were like unlikable. Even the villains and the bad guys are like interesting and kind of like you kind of like them. So honestly, in this book, I don't know if there's any character that I actually hate or dislike, especially like knowing their backstory and like where they're gonna end up in future books. Like, I don't know if there's any characters in this book that I don't like, even the ones that you're supposed to not like. Like, I love to not like them. So I don't think I have any actually. What was the worst and best part about writing this book? What's that quote? I hate writing, but I love having written. So when I was done with it and looking back on it, I'm so proud of this book and the way that it turned out. That's the best part is having the finished product. The worst part, I think was just the stress of knowing this was gonna be the first book in the series. So I was very, focused on making sure I set everything up properly for the rest of the series and like getting a good balance with the world building so I just kind of felt like I was like walking on a tightrope while I was writing this whole book of trying to like achieve this good balance of setting everything up properly and being like terrified like if I forget something or if I figure something out down the line and I didn't set up for in book one so I did a lot of planning ahead of time trying to figure out what's going to happen later on so nothing feels like it's coming out of nowhere and it's all set up for in the first book. So this first book was really challenging just because I felt like I was trying to build a foundation for a lot of different things. Did you find that your process was different writing this one versus writing your contemporaries? For sure, way more planning ahead of time, both because of the world building and also because it's a series. Way more, um, not even just like outlining, just like taking notes, world building, things to come, keeping track of all of the details that I did come up with to keep consistent in future books. There was just like a lot more work outside of the actual writing of the book than for previous books. What's your favorite scene in the book? I can't tell you without spoiling. Probably, mm, that's hard. There's a scene in chapter 22 where shit goes down and so satisfying. I really like the opening scene for this book. I just feel like it really sets the tone for the series and I think it's a really interesting opening so I like it a lot. Oh, and then there's a scene, I don't know what chapter it is. Um, I just find it to be very visual and I just, I don't know, I really enjoy like the atmosphere of it. It also has some of the like twists and reveals in it, so I just think it's like an exciting part of the book. Chapter 12 and chapter 13. Also, there's a scene in chapter 16. Okay, I can't. <laughs> then I have a question on why I decided to self-publish versus traditional publishing, basically. I th Honestly, that could be like its whole own video. I feel like it's too long to answer in this video, so um, if that's something you guys also would be interested in, let me know down below. Maybe we'll make a whole video about it. Writing a series must be incredibly difficult. How do you organize your timelines, characters, etc. in order to keep each book consistent? I feel like I would forget in certain aspects of book one when writing book three, for sure. So I have all of my outlines and notes and stuff, and then when I'm done with the book, I create like a series bible where I list out like terms and how I've spelled them. Characters, names and last names and previous descriptions that I've used for them before. Timelines, character arcs. So I'm trying to stay on top of that. Um, ask me again when I'm writing book three how that's going. <laughs> what is your favorite line? I have a good one. Do I give you context for it or not? Oh, I can't. I don't think I can give you context for it without doing some minor spoilers. So I'm just gonna have to give it to you without context. But I can give you some context on the characters. So this is a line of dialogue. Our character's name is Monroe. She's a friend of our main character, Valerie, and she's a skinwalker, so she shifts into a cat. So no context. You want me to castrate him? You know I could be really sneaky about it. In and out. No one would be the wiser. Just a cat and a penis. It's my favorite line. I love Monroe. Her sense of humor I just find so amusing. Was there a defining moment that helped solidify your decision to pursue writing as a career? How did you discover writing and that it was a big interest to you? So I wish I had a better story. I've just kind of always known since I was like five, I've been a writer. So thankfully I've had very supportive people in my life. Like every teacher I've ever had, my parents, they've always told me I should be a writer. Like I've always been encouraged to do that. Getting a full ride scholarship for creative writing to college was also kind of like encouraging. Although I will say when I was in college, that's when I really started to doubt Am I gonna be able to find a job like this? Actually, my first week of college, I had to go to a temporary academic advisor to like talk about my plans for being there and because I hadn't declared my major yet. And he was like, so what are you thinking? I was like, I'm thinking creative writing. And he <laughs> basically laughed in my face and told me I would live in my parents' basement for the rest of my life if I did that. So 
that was how I started my college career. So then I spent the first two years of college trying to come up with a different major because I was so convinced I wouldn't find a job with creative writing. So I played around in health and exercise science. I played around in like a pre-law track and sophomore year I finally declared my major and I went with creative writing. So I think part of it was stubbornness and I was irritated that people were telling me I wouldn't find a job and I was like, I'm gonna prove them wrong. But then also, you know, I graduated and I went into copywriting and I worked in an office and I just knew immediately like I'm never gonna be happy doing this. I'm never gonna be fully satisfied. I think part of it also, like I said, my parents are super supportive. My mom is an artist like that is who she is she paints and she's an amazing artist but that's not what she pursued she is a CFO now she went into accounting and numbers and stuff for the sake of having a stable job and my mom is just the coolest person ever <laughs> I'm very fortunate to have a role model like her like growing up in a trailer and with parents who were very like traditional and said like girls don't go to college so she got bunch of jobs and paid her own way through college so I think the fact that she wasn't able to follow her dreams like that like she really wanted that for me so she really pushed me to pursue writing so I think my defining moment was literally just having her as a parent and then that first job out of college I knew like this environment no matter what job it is no matter what company it is even if I got like my dream company or dream job I'm not gonna be happy doing this this isn't what I want to do okay I think those are all of the extra questions watch me pop in a third time who knows hi me again. I was already set up because I was filming something else. So we got some more questions. Let's do it. Do you have a dream cast or actors you see in your heads for the marionettes? Usually my answer is no. I'm so bad about this kind of stuff. So I don't have casting for the majority of the characters in this series, but I have a couple who I have people in mind for just because they're on my Pinterest board. I guess I'll put the pictures on the screen so you can see who I'm talking about. It's like not even necessarily the actors, it's like just these particular pictures of them. So I feel like Zoe Deutsch, just this picture of her, this is how I picture Monroe. This picture of Elizabeth Olsen is how I picture Valerie's older sister, Kala. And then this picture of Adelaide Kane is how I picture Valerie. Those are the only characters that I have actors for though. How did you come up with the concept for your cover? I cannot tell you. Not because I don't know, because it would spoil stuff in the book. So go read it, then come back to me. This is an interesting question. So have you had any issues sales-wise with releasing in multiple genres? So many writers suggest staying in one genre for a while and I was just curious if it hindered your career in any way. I'd personally love to genre hop. This is why I always say do as I say, not as I do. For sure it's advised to stay in one genre or at least related genres. I could talk all day about pen names and like my decisions to stay in just my name. Yeah, if I could go back and do things differently. The fact of the matter is when I first started publishing, when I published The Sweetest Kind of Poison, I wasn't intending to go into self-publishing that was a one-time thing it was just like a for fun project so there was no way of me like seeing what was to come so if I could go back I would publish my poetry under a pen name I would have it under a different name it is what it is and then having my contemporaries and then having the marionettes which is paranormal all under one name the problem is I feel like I really want to genre hop around I sat down when I published the anti-virginity packs which I kind of consider my first like real step into self-publishing and decided, you know, what are my goals with my career? What do I really want to get out of doing this? And the number one thing for me is writing the books that I want to write and enjoying it. That's more important to me than the money or like having my career grow faster. So for sure, I would recommend following people's advice to stick to a genre or two, keep different pen names for totally different genres. But my thing is like, honestly, I'm not even sure where my groove is. Like I started out writing contemporary, now I'm writing paranormal. So like if I wrote in a different pen name for each book, there's no telling if I'm going to continue writing that genre. And there's no telling how consistently I would be able to publish books under each pen name. So if I can't keep up with the pen names, if I can't consistently publish under all of them, if I'm not certain I want to keep writing in that genre, it just really didn't make sense to me to jump through all of the hoops of setting up all of these different pen names. Has it hindered my career? Is there a noticeable dip in sales? I don't think so. I mean, I feel like my career would probably have grown faster if all four of my books that are out right now were in the same genre, for sure. But I just find poetry to be more of a niche thing. So I don't, the only crossover I see with my poetry and my contemporary books are people who watch my YouTube channel because they're reading the books for me, not because of they're interested in both genres. Like I have lots of people say like, I've never read a poetry book before, but I read your poetry books. So has it hindered me sales wise? I see fewer sales on my poetry, but I published like the anti-relationship year after all of that. And that one has been selling better than all my other books. So like I'm going up with each book. So I feel like it's not negatively affecting my sales. Ask me again after the marionettes comes out and we'll compare then because I feel like that's going to be the biggest genre hop. So ask me again in a year or two. I don't know. I feel like my career would probably be growing in a different way if I had stuck to a genre, 
but I'm um, writing the books that I'm passionate about and enjoying myself and yeah just doing it my way is more important to me than that and I'm still making enough money to pay the bills I'm supporting myself so I'm happy. What is the best and worst part of writing a long series? For me, I mean, again, ask me in a few years after we're a little bit further into this series, I feel like the pressure on making the first book as good as possible is a lot greater than if you're writing standalones because that is the entry point of the series. So that's your first impression with readers. And if people don't love that first book, it doesn't matter how good the other books are in the series. They're not going to read them, you know? So if you can't hook them with that first book. The rest of the books are not going to matter because they're not going to read on and it's not like they can jump to book three and just start there. You have to start with book one. So I feel like there's a lot of pressure to make book one like fantastic and hook everybody, which obviously you want all of your books to be fantastic. But it's a scary thought like if I really mess up book one, that I'm investing all of this money and all of this time into these later books that nobody's gonna read. So really nailing that first book. I feel like make it or break it thing for a series, which is pretty stressful. Since this was a different genre from Terry, was your creative process similar or different with marionettes compared to your non-fantasy works? I think we kind of touched on this in some of the previous questions. I definitely did a lot more work outside of writing the book, a lot more preparation, a lot more planning. Like the anti-relationship year, for example, was a whirlwind of a book. Like I wrote it so quickly. It was honestly like so easy. I didn't even really struggle with that book. It just like came out pretty much fully formed. And then the marionettes, and I wrote it in a month. I wrote it in July of last year. And then the marionettes, I feel like was this long, drawn out, painful process where I started writing it in November. And because the rough draft was so short and I was just like constantly adding to it, it felt like a draft that never ended. Like I was just continually adding to it, continually trying to finish the book basically. So even though I wrote the rough draft in November, the 37,000 words, I didn't finish until, I don't know, when did we start working with beta readers? March, something like, I don't know. It was like five months where I felt like I was still writing the rough draft basically. So it was just a much slower <laughs> process because I just had a lot more to figure out as I went. How would your main characters from the pact respond slash adapt if they were thrust into the world of the marionettes? They would die. <laughs> I mean, um, humans are the bottom of the food chain in this world. And I just feel like, I'm sorry, there's just, they would just die. <laughs> Sorry, Joe and Mare. No. I mean, can I bring them into this series as another like kind of creature? Could they also be witches or vampires or something? Because maybe then Joe would stand a chance, but as they are, honestly, they'd probably just die. Whose arc or what character was the hardest to develop? That's a good question. Um, I don't know how much to say without spoiling things. Valerie's romantic relationships. Difficult. That's all I'm gonna say difficult. Not a character arc, but some plot stuff that were the most difficult were, I've talked about how there's a ton of mystery and like suspense and secrets and those kind of things in this book. And I was a difficult balance for me to find with the first book of like, how many ties can I leave open-ended at the end of this book for the rest of the series without the reader feeling like nothing is resolved and they didn't get answers to anything. It took me a while to figure out like, what do I want to reveal in this first book and what do I want to keep secret because there's a lot of subplots, there's a lot of mysteries, and there's a lot of things left to be discovered with the series. And I ended up revealing more in this first book than I did in the rough draft because my beta reader said like, we need some more answers. So finding a good balance of like, I still want to keep quite a few things secretive, but I also wanted to throw you a bone, like give you some answers in this first book. So finding a good balance of like which mysteries I was going to let be resolved in this first book. That was one of the biggest challenges. This is kind of similar, but I have a different answer. So what is the hardest part about writing a paranormal book? Because there's so many different variations on vampires and werewolves and witches and stuff like that. Making the decisions for my world building and figuring out how things were going to work. There was just so many different possibilities. So deciding that and then like making that very clear in the book was hard. Like how do my vampires work? How do I want them to work? How do my witches work? How does my magic system work? Like it was just difficult because it's overwhelming because there's so many different options you have. Like you could go off of, you know, a previously established kind of take on vampires or you could come up with something completely your own. There was just, I'm indecisive. So just having so many options and so many ways that I could go with it was overwhelming because I was like, there's so many different directions that I could take this and that would really impact the story and the plot and how I can proceed with things. What happens to my vampires in the sun? How do my vampires turn? 
what do my vampires feed on? How do you kill my vampires? And it was just like so many things I had to decide on. So that's what I found challenging about working with a paranormal book is I have all of these creatures and there's no hard and fast rules that you have to follow for any of them. You could make them whatever you want in your world as long as you like establish that and keep it consistent. So I just had a lot of decisions to make early on with how everything was gonna work in my world. Okay, this video is already so long and we keep popping in here. So I don't care if I get any more questions, this is gonna be the end. And if you have more questions, we'll, maybe we'll make like a part two. I'll send you to the end of the video now. So let me wrap this up. Some things in the book that I like, I'm trying to think of like what would be interesting tropes that you guys would wanna know about. So we got some slow burn romance, which is my favorite. We got a lot of strong friendship relationships, which was really fun to write. I really enjoyed that. A lot of family drama. What I actually think I love the most about this book is if you know my reading taste at all, I love paranormal and I love thrillers. I love books with twists and just like things that can surprise me. And so I feel like my taste in books really shows in this book because we have the paranormal, we've got the slow burn romance, and we have a lot of mysteries and twists and things that I hope will surprise you. Everyone who's read it so far, my beta readers, my friends, my mom, my critique partners, all of them have been surprised by almost everything I wanted them to be surprised by in the book. No one's been like, oh, I saw that coming. Well, maybe they just didn't tell me. <laughs> but everybody's had kind of similar reactions. So I hope you guys do too when you read it. Oh, we've got like a broody, like dark haired, witty, mysterious, tragic past boy. You know that character, we got him. If you're a little bit wary because of the fantasy aspect, I hate high fantasy and really hard to understand world building. So I think you'll appreciate I think this is really easy to understand world building and kind of like fantasy for people who don't like fantasy or people who like fantasy but not for the fantasy elements if that makes sense like they don't want all of the crazy world building and like political stuff it's still in there because I had to like flesh out the world but it's not the main focus because that's not what I enjoy writing as much my mom actually just read it and my mom reads all my books she's been my first reader since I was like 12 and I wrote my first book so she's read like everything I've ever written and she's always super supportive and she always tells me she likes it but like you can tell when she doesn't like something so when she came back to me with this book I was actually expecting her not to like this one because she doesn't really read fantasy and I wonder if I still have the text from her when she finished the book <laughs> I'll just put a screenshot here like all of these exclamation points <laughs> she's read all of my books I've never gotten that reaction from her about a book I was talking to her on the phone the other day and she was like you know, I've liked all of your stuff but I could tell this is your genre I could tell this is your thing because this was your best writing this was really good and my dad doesn't usually read my books um, especially with titles like the anti-virginity pact it scares him he doesn't want to read it and she's like no I'm gonna make dad read this one he's gonna like this one I'm gonna make him read it the book is officially endorsed by Pam the book is available on Amazon this is an Amazon exclusive book so you can read it in Kindle Unlimited but if you want a paperback print copy that's available on Amazon but the print copies are also available everywhere so you can grab a paperback even if you don't read on Amazon you should be able to find that just about anywhere ways that you could help out the book if you feel so inclined I would appreciate it so much you could request that your library get a copy you could request that your local bookstore get some copies you can add it on Goodreads if you read it and enjoy it I would so so appreciate if you would post a review on Amazon reviews on the site like that makes such a huge difference for books and they're so difficult for authors to get so even if it's just a line saying you liked it even if it's just a star rating it would help me out so much. I would really, really appreciate it. If you use Goodreads, you could add the book to lists like fantasy books of the year, stuff like that, just so it would like get in front of other people if you want. And if you enjoy it, tell your friends, post about it, share it, spread the word. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I'll have links for everything you could possibly want down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoy the book. Can't believe it's finally here. I'm nervous, <laughs> but I'm really proud of this one. I really, really like the way this one turned out. It was a rough road to get here. If you haven't been following along since the beginning, the rough draft of this book I wrote in November of 2020 and it was 37,000 words. That's the shortest draft I've ever written of any book. And now the book is about 71,000 words, so it ended up being about twice as long. So I did a huge overhaul with this book. Went through five drafts, went through a lot of beta readers, but I'm very, very pleased with where it's turned out. I hope it surprises you. I hope the twists get you. I hope you love all of the angst and sexual tension and slow burn. And you can go subscribe to my newsletter over on my website if you want to be the first to know when book two is available. Actually, I'm pre-filming this, so now that I'm saying that, um, book two should be available for pre-order now. So if you finish book one and you're dying for book two, you can pre-order it 
right now. Book two is called Wicked Souls. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for reading if you choose to pick up the book. If you're new here, maybe subscribe and stick around. I hope you enjoy the rest of the release week content. I have a lot of fun videos planned. Leave me a comment down below. Maybe give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. And I will just see you guys with our next video tomorrow. Bye. No.